Hello there, my name is Tori Deweese and I'm a technical marketing engineer at Cisco Systems. I'm focused on enterprise networking, specifically programmability and automation. And today I'm excited to talk to you about NetConf with Yang Suite. So in this video, we'll cover a programmability overview, why NetConf is important, NetConf capabilities, and then we'll wrap up with a demo. So let's get started. First, we have our device programmability lifecycle. And here this covers many features, including day zero for device onboarding, day one for device configuration, day two for device monitoring, up to day n for device optimization. So one important thing to note is that throughout each of these days, throughout the entire programmability lifecycle, NetConf, which we'll be focused on in this video, is able to be used for any of these days. Next, we'll move into our programmable interfaces. So common options include NetConf, RESTConf, and GNMI, which are programmatic interfaces that are our way to interface with iOS XE devices, similar to how we may do this with CLIs or SNMP or even web UI. So one important thing to note here is that for each of these interfaces, we use Yang data models, and this includes OpenConfig, and Cisco native, so we can use both configuration and operational data. So a further look at our interfaces specifically focused on NetConf, we'll be looking at some of our operations, including git, git config, edit config, establish subscription. And we'll note that NetConf uses XML encoding over SSH. So why should we be using NetConf? Why is it important? In the words of IETF, NetConf is defined to install, manipulate, and delete the configuration of network devices. And NetConf is realized on top of a remote procedure call, or RPC, using XML. And it helps us to edit or query configuration on a network device, as well as we can run any of the typical RPCs that we may have used uh, on our CLIs. Additionally, NetConf allows us to lock and unlock data stores for better control over the device. And it supports streaming telemetry. And as we mentioned before, NetConf can be used in any phase of the device lifecycle. So now let's talk about some NetConf standards. Here we have the RFCs. So these are realized by IETF, all of these NetConf standards originating in 2006, and there have been updates to this day, and there will be more in the future, I'm sure. And Cisco has adopted many of these NetConf standards. In terms of capabilities, first we'll focus on the operations. So here we're going to really highlight the, these top three, these main operations. So in terms of CLIs, Git is similar to show question mark. Git config is similar to show run, and edit config is similar to conf t. NetConf has one required data store, and that is the running config. So what is a data store? A data store is a copy of the configuration data. And so of course we need a place where we can store what's currently running on our device. Next, we have the optional startup config or the startup data store. And this is where we store all the configurations that we want to be used each time our device starts up. Finally, we have a third optional data store. And this is the candidates data store, which is really interesting because it's essentially a sandbox where we can go and try out specific configurations before we decide whether or not we would like to go ahead and commit those to our running config. So now we can take a look at how we can go ahead and get started with NetConf. So in this example, we have a 9300X switch, and we're going to go into global config mode using conf t or configure terminal. The first step is to configure our AAA. So this is authentication, authorization, and accounting. So in this case, we'll be doing our authentication and authorization locally, as you can see. And next we create a user. And lastly, we go ahead and configure NetConf Yang. 
In today's example, we'll set up periodic streaming telemetry with NetConf. Specifically, we'll be covering CPU utilization and we'll be receiving that data from our 9300 device every 10 seconds. Great, so here we are in Yang Suite and now we're ready for our demo. First, we'll go over to protocols and select NetConf. Then we will select our Yang set. And in this case, we'll be using IETS Yang push. We'll go ahead and load our modules here. So next, instead of having a netconf operation of git config, which is our default, we'll go ahead and select other RPC and select our device. In terms of the other RPC, we'll be using established subscription. So here we wanna add some input. First, our input stream will be yang push. Next, we'll go ahead and select our encoding, which is XML because that's required by netconf. And we can use a filter type. So in this case, we want to filter by our XPath. So I have an XPath here, which we can see this is just to look at the CPU utilization. And lastly, we want to add, we can choose either periodic, so time-based or event-based updates. And in this case, we'll go with periodic. So every 10 seconds, we want to get an update saying, hey, here is your CPU utilization. So in this case, I'm going to use 10 seconds. This is measured in centiseconds here. And now that we are ready, we have configured everything that we need to within Yang Suite. We're now ready to apply this to our device over the NetConf protocol. So first we select build RPC, and this is exactly the uh, RPC that will be sent to our device. So we can look at the details of this a little bit and notice that Yang push is exactly what we have defined as our stream, and this is the stream here. For encoding, we will be using XML, just like we put encoding as XML here. We have specifically added the XPath filter, which is this XPath, and this can be seen as our XPath filter here. And lastly, we will be getting updates periodically every 10 seconds, just like we have period and the 1000 here to represent 10 seconds. So now we're ready to go ahead and apply this to our device. Awesome, so a lot of cool things are happening here. The part that I want to highlight is that we have sent some information to our device, and this is exactly the RPC that we were analyzing on the previous screen. Next, we get a response from our host or from our 9300 itself that says, OK, I have received your request to start a subscription, and here's the subscription ID that I've created for you. So now this NetConf interaction is complete, and we can go ahead and close the session. But before closing the session, we have received our first notification from the device itself, which gives us our CPU utilization. So perfect, we've received one uh, piece of data, but now let's say we want to receive more. So we can, within Yang Suite, go ahead and start a session. And now that our session has started, we're connected um, using the NetConf port 830. We can go back to the previous screen to run our RPCs again. And what this means is we will be receiving updates from our host periodically. Again, this is every 10 seconds. And so NetConf allows us to not only configure um, our device, but to view operational data and also to work with actions or what you may consider as traditional RPCs. And with that, this concludes our demo. As you can see, we're receiving regular updates on what's going on on our device. Next, I want to leave you with some resources. So if you're interested in trying out Yang Suite, here's the link to do so. You can clone this from GitHub, and then you'll be able to either create a dockerized image to spin up a Yang Suite, or you can use pip install. We've been talking a little bit about Yang models throughout this video. So I have also linked here the Yang models that you can go through and check out specifically the XE ones in our 17.7 or most current release. 
And lastly, there's a configuration guide and there are two main pieces that I wanna point out here. So here we have highlighted the NetConf chapter. And this is where you can go to learn everything you need to about NetConf. There's a section specific to NetConf and RESTConf service level ACLs. And lastly, in this model-driven telemetry section, you can view information about how to set up a subscription and learn a little bit more about examples like the one that we went over in our demo today. So now let's regroup and reflect a little bit on what was covered today. So first of all, we went over a programmability overview. Then we learned why NetConf is important. We also took a look at the NetConf capabilities. And lastly, we wrapped up with a demo. So now you're well on your way to becoming both a NetConf and a Yang Suite Pro. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video both useful and informative. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.